there is the debate going on all of the time. Which camera is best? Is it a DSLR? Is it a new mirrorless camera? Uh, is it film or medium format? Well, there is the argument that the best camera is the one that you have with you. And by that, I mean, of course, mobile phone cameras. These cameras built into phones these days are very powerful. They might not be as sharp or as accurate as a DSLR or mirrorless, um, but we can still use them to create some really great images. In this video, I'm going to be taking some macro photos using a variety of different phone cameras to see what we can get using some clip-on lenses. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adaptalux and welcome to another macro photography tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing something that I've not really done a lot of in the past, mobile phone photography. I'm going to be uh, clipping on a couple of lenses onto my phone and trying out some macro photography using my phone's camera. Now these are a couple of new additions to the Adaptalux store. I'm going to link up in the top right hand corner where you can get hold of uh, these lenses. We've got one that's 100mm and we've got a two-in-one uh, clip-on macro lens for your phone. Now these are a really great way to get into macro photography uh, for a relatively low cost. You can just uh, attach these to the phone that you already have and uh, start shooting macro. It's a lot cheaper than going out and buying a DSLR or a mirrorless camera and then the uh, required lenses as well. Although a proper camera with a proper macro lens is going to be uh, sharper and a better image quality overall, you can't argue with the convenience of just clipping uh, a much cheaper lens onto your phone camera and having a play around with the subjects uh, that you see on our channel all of the time. You can do quite a lot of what we've been showing you using a mobile phone, using uh, something as simple as a little clip-on lens. I'm going to get these things out, take a look at them, and I'm going to be looking at them on a couple of different phones as well, including the new iPhone 12 Pro, uh, a couple of Androids, and an older iPhone as well. So we can get a variety of different picture qualities and see what they do on different types of phone cameras. Let's take a look at how these mobile phone lenses actually work. And they are devilishly simple in their operation. They quite literally clip onto the side of your phone. There's a little aperture here which uh, can move around and you can place that right over your uh, phone camera lens so that it lines up. Uh, we have a little adjustment screw here as well so that you can change how wide that clip goes. You can fit it over even quite uh, bulky phone cases. Once you've got that attached, you attach a little lens to the front of it. Now this is the 100mm uh, version, so you can see there that we've got a little 100mm lens and you'd fit that over the front of your camera. I'm going to be taking some pictures of these flowers. I've got a nice bouquet with a good variety of different flowers to take a look at. I've also got a nice variety of different phones to take a look at them with. So I've got a couple of older models here um, which have good cameras um, but they're just a little dated now. So I've got an iPhone 6, um, I've got a Google Pixel 3a um, and I've also got some newer phones as well. So we have the uh, top of the range iPhone, the iPhone 12 uh, Pro and I've also got a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. If you have multiple cameras on your phone, the first thing you're going to need to do is choose which one to clip your lens to. On the iPhone, we have three. So we have the telephoto lens at the top. This one in the middle is the ultra wide lens and the one at the bottom is your standard wide lens. Using the ultra wide lens is going to see a lot of your clip on lens in your frame. So that's not ideal. The wide one is just fine and the telephoto will get you a lot closer and cut out um, any vignetting that you might see uh, because of that clip on lens. So I'm going to be using the telephoto lens. On the iPhone, it's a little bit tricky to make your phone choose this lens. So just for those iPhone users, uh, you want to be using the portrait mode on your standard camera. Every phone with a camera is going to come with a built-in camera app. 
uh, and they all have different features. So I'm not going to get into uh, which phones have which features and which are best. Suffice to say that if you don't have some of the features that I'm going to talk about, it might be best to use a third party app. Uh, you can download Lightroom and Photoshop on your mobile and both of those have cameras uh, within their own apps that allow you to change your settings, uh, zoom, focus, white balance and all of those types of things. On some phones that comes natively, like on the Samsung S10 Plus, you can do all of that within the Samsung camera app itself. I'm going to be using a variety of different apps and a variety of different settings, um, but you can find what works best for you, your situation and your phone. Attaching the lenses is quite easy, uh, but it is very important to get the lens centered over the camera. So the best way to do this is to attach the clip on its own first, line it up on the front of your camera and then screw the, uh, the lens onto the front of your clip afterwards. Now that I've got my clip-on lens on my phone, I can start taking some pictures of these lovely flowers. However, when you start getting up close, uh, both with a normal macro lens on a normal camera and with these clip-on lenses on your mobile phone, you'll start to notice that light becomes a problem. Getting light in between your subject and your lens and uh, dealing with whatever working distance you have uh, is going to be a bit tricky, especially with uh, these really, um, really, really close uh, 12 to 24 clip-on lenses, uh, the working distance is quite literally the very edge of this uh, little piece of plastic diffuser. So you're going to be up close, uh, right up against your subject and getting light right in between there is a bit tricky. Today I'm going to be using the Adapt Look Studio. I'm going to be getting some nice lighting arms in close to my flowers so that we don't have an issue with getting a little bit of light. I'm also going to be using some colored light to enhance the look of some of these flowers. I've got some nice roses in here which I think will look really nice with some red light. So I've got my Adapt Look Studio. Today I've got it plugged onto the top of a uh, full size tripod. Uh, usually I'd use a little mini tripod, but today these flowers are nice and high up. So I'm just going to start plugging lighting arms in and uh, keep everything nice and high. I've got a uh, red lighting arm here with a white diffuser and I've got a white lighting arm with another white diffuser on it. This is going to give me a little highlight of red light on my flowers and I can place that wherever I like. And then I can bring my white light in to give me a nice representative color of my flower. Once I've got that, I've got my hands completely free to use my phone and get in all around these flowers and start exploring. The two Apexel clip-on lens kits that we've added to our store do have a few differences between them, uh, namely the uh, the magnification. Uh, you're getting a much wider view with this 100mm lens, um, but you've seen the, uh, the more heavy-duty clip for this 100mm lens. It's a little bit heavier, so it needs a little bit more uh, of a contraption to hold it to your phone. Uh, the 12 and 24 um, two-in-one kit has a more simple clip, uh, but it does have those two lenses which can be uh, separated or combined to get a little bit more variety in your magnification factors. And that's not even taking into account all of the options that you have with the equivalent focal lengths in your phone as well. If you have multiple cameras, uh, you're probably going to be better off using uh, the telephoto for the 100 mm lens, it'll get you a little bit closer. Um, but the wide, the normal angle of your phone camera works quite well when you're only using one of these two lenses. It's hard to give you a recommendation on which one would be better for your particular phone, uh, which particular cameras you have, uh, and what you're trying to achieve. Um, but if you get either of these, you're going to be able to get some really great macro shots. If you need more options afterwards, you can pick up the other one and use them all in combination with each other to get the exact type of shot you're looking for, for your particular subject. Exploring my flowers using these little clip-on lenses is a lot of fun. It's so much easier than uh, trying to get a large lens right into the middle of a flower. You can get these things right up close onto the actual petals and get some really interesting angles. 
It's also really interesting that with this two-in-one lens and a telephoto camera on your phone, you can get really high magnification factors, even more so than with a dedicated macro lens. Unless you're spending huge amounts of money to get very high magnification factors, this thing's actually going to uh, get a little bit closer. Another thing that I've noticed with the two-in-one lens is that it is absolutely critical that you get it centered on your phone camera. Otherwise, you're going to start to pick up some distortion towards the edges of your image. The closer you get to a subject and the more magnification you've got, the shallower your depth of field is going to be. That means when we're getting really close with our two-in-one lens, with both of these lenses stacked, we have a very soft image. We've not got a lot of our flowers in focus at once. Because this is my first time playing around with these, I did want to try shooting a flat subject as well as my flowers. I took this uh, 10 pence piece and placed it right in front of my, uh, my lens. Now with this particular uh, configuration, my working distance is almost exactly the edge of this piece of plastic. What that means is that you can place this down on any flat subject like uh, paper money or, or indeed coins and have it in focus almost entirely all of the time. So you can really uh, get very quick images by just placing this down onto a surface and everything will be in focus uh, pretty much automatically. When it comes to the different types of phones that I've been using today, I think it's quite obvious that the uh, newer, more expensive flagship phones with multiple cameras uh, are getting better image quality. However, the older phones and the more mid-range phones are still holding up really well. They're getting really great images. All of them have their own little software quirks and things that they try and do differently to the others. So your phone might react a little bit differently and try and change the color temperatures or the focus. Um, I do recommend trying to take control of as much of that as possible. So if your uh, built-in camera app has a pro mode, switch over to that. If not, try and uh, get a third party app so that you can change all of your color temperature and your focus manually without leaving too much of it up to the software algorithms to decide for you. If your first step into macro photography is buying some clip-on phone lenses, then your second step should be to consider your lighting. Obviously, using the Adapt-Look Studio and the flexible lighting arms and the colors is a fantastic way to get light into that narrow working distance that you have between the end of your lens and the front of your subject. Adding some external lighting really brings your images to the next level. It's hard to use your built-in flash on your phone uh, and you're going to need some uh, very favorable conditions to get shots in the sun because of the, the lenses are going to start to block a lot of that sunlight. It's going to cause shadows unless you can take control of your light and direct it exactly where you need it. So if you're just starting out or just trying out some lenses, lighting is something that you're definitely going to need to consider. I hope that you've enjoyed this little exploration into mobile phone macro photography. I've certainly had fun. It's actually strangely relaxing playing around with phones instead of DSLRs, having those big screens on the back to see your results straight away and being able to get really, really close with uh, very little effort and knowledge required. It's actually quite liberating. If you want to check out the lenses and the lighting that I've been using today, I'll put a link down in the description so that you can go and have a look. I'll certainly be making a lot more use of that combination between the Adapt-Look Studio lighting and some mobile phone clip-on lenses. I'll be using them a lot more in future videos, so make sure to subscribe uh, so that you don't miss out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments whether you're going to be trying out a little bit of macro photography using your mobile phone or sticking with your DSLR. That's all that I've got time for for now though, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.